we are looking at an example and proof of the pull through or pull out property otherwise known also as the taking out what is known of conditional expectations before I present it recall that the expected value of a constant times a random variable is and then it's equal to the constant so the constant comes out times the mean of x now the pull out property is pretty much this given that's conditioned on some other random variable so here expected value of two random variables here y and some random variable some function of x you can forget that g if you like some function of x so expected value of y x given x is and then the x pulls through so it comes out times the conditional expectation of y times x in other words it's like this but the conditional version of it now you want to get into some detail of whether what g is g is some kind of suitable function we can forget about that let's look at an example of this well I'm gonna let's look at an example say I have got two discrete random variables this is their joint mass function we want to find the prob expected value of the product of x y given that y is 3 two methods so first method I'm going to do by the direct method by the definition of conditional expectations let's recall then given two random variables that are discrete that this is the definition where we've got here probability the conditional probability and we're summing over the outcome x not both of them not both random variables because y is fixed okay well let's uh, call that product x y let's call it s and so we want this now s is also a discrete random variable so this is by the definition we need the conditional probability of s given y is 3 and we can get that from the pro joint property mass function C video 24 if you want more details where I do that but so uh, let's let's get that here so X is 1 2 or 3 s the value of s given that y is 3 can be 3 6 or 9 because s is going to be 3 times the x value okay and then we can get the corresponding conditional probabilities this one here let's just do this one this probability that s is equal to 3 given that y is 3 so this is conditional probability formula this is from the joint table y is, x is 1 y is 3 that's 1 over 6 times that that's the marginal for y is 3 so sum across all x for y is 3 6 plus a 6 plus 0 that's going to be a half a third sorry a third so then we get putting that in here we get a half so that's a half likewise do it same for following that zero so that this for this must be a half all right so now I have this guy here the pro conditional probability mass function so I can just put in the numbers ie this outcome 3 times probability 6 times probability 9 times probability of that happening is 6 and that is very sensible because uh, s given y is 3 s can take a value of 3 6 9 probability it's 3 is a half 9 is a half so somewhere in the middle it's 6 that's just using the standard definition of conditional expectation now we're going to method 2 we're going to use the pull through property the thing is that when you condition y on y then um, it's only x given y the probability structures that x is given y is what we need to know let's start with the first line same here again now to the second line this is what I'm saying so if we know the value of s we know the value of x given that y is 3 so if s is 3 that's the same as saying the outcome x is 1 similarly for these two 
and the probability of this being half will be the same as probability x is equal to 1 given y is 3. So probability structure of this is the same as probability structure of x given y is 3. So probability structure of s given y is 3 is the same as the structure of x given y is 3. Okay, but s is equal to x, y, but you're given that y is 3, so we'll just substitute 3x. And now you can see the outcome here is in terms of x, so we just, the s here now is becomes the x. And y, which is, is given as 3, is a constant with respect to what we're summing over, which is x, so it, we pull it out. That's the pull out bit. Yeah, here I've just described to you the same property mass functions. But this guy here is by definition expected conditional expectation of x given that y is 3, which you may know from above already is the property conditional property function. So I've just written it out here again. So just put in the numbers outcome times sum of the outcome times associated probability six again. Basically, that's the proof for the um, discrete case, but if we just want to kind of write it down, I'm going to just do it for the discrete case and for x, y, given y, as opposed to the question which is a function of x uh, times y given y, but you can just kind of repeat re repeat the steps. Oh, it's given x as well. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter about the... Uh, so I'm doing it this way, okay? I'm just, same thing, just different notation. Right, so let's start with this side. This side says that it's the mean of x, y given y. So let's say it's given a specific value of y, so denoted by a little y. Notation is important here. Then is equal to, by definition, this, okay, the outcome times the conditional probability x given y. In the previous description we said that the structure here, given that y is fixed, is going to be all the probability structure here is x given y. And we use, right, so y comes out, it's the pull out property because it's we're summing over x, y is a constant with respect to just summing over x. But this, uh, where's my x gone? A moment. I need to put an x here, don't I? Right. X has disappeared. Right, there you go. That's x there, right there. But this is, by definition, this guy here, conditional expectation of x given y, particular value of y. And we don't stop there, because that's not what we want to show. We want to show this. It's, now, this is notation. Condition that y is given a particular value is a function of that y calculated at a particular value, denoted by little y, and that is not a random variable, it's a particular value. Uh, emphasizing again, we talk about notation now. Uh, likewise, with expect mean of x given y, calculated a particular value, it's not a random variable. However, both these guys given y, big Y, which is the random variable, they're both random variables. So all I'm doing is I'm transferring back from here, compute at a particular value of Y now, just rewrite it so it's in terms of a gen um, random variables. So then this becomes that, and this we just change back to big Y's, the big Y's, and that's the result we want to show. Going back here, where could you go wrong with this proof? We are summing over x, not x, y, although there is y here, because we are conditioned, we are given the value of y, a particular value. If you replace this conditional probability by the joint probability of x and y, and sum over x and y, then recall that that would be the expected value of x times y, then that's not a conditional expectation. Okay. So now I've done that, you can go back here and do it for this case. Yeah, and it'll be pretty much the same step if we just assume um, without loss of generality x and y and g of x is uh, 
the discrete random variables. This is just a little technicality here which you don't have to really worry about if you're a newbie suitable function G. And so we'll leave it there.